Nashville. I came to Nashville about this many years ago. I'm in a honky tonk, and this little old blonde headed gal comes up to me and she says to me, Hello, cowboy. This your first rodeo? <laughs> what? That's how we met. It's oh. kind of not how I remember. You don't remember it that way? No, one? yeah, no, no. What, what, what place did this happen at? Hmm. Refresh that memory of mine. That's an excellent point. That is an excellent that, You know what? What? That was not Riley was Joe. not Riley Joe. It was Rowdy Joe. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the uh, redneck brother of mine, apparently. Yes, Rowdy Joe. You know, yeah. You know, a couple yeah. shots at the gala. Yeah, yeah, lose some you details. You're listening to the Nash Rocket Media Experiment. Singer, songwriter, <laughs> screenwriter, actor, dog mom. Oh, yeah. What else do I put in there? Uh, ice skater. Ice skater, okay. Let's not forget. Dorothy Hamiller. What? what? <laughs> um, I'm not good, though, at that. You know what? What? Anytime you're on ice Standing. and you're moving... <laughs> And your ankle is up here above yes, your head? That does happen. You show off. Some, only that. That's like my one move. <laughs> that, uh, there's really nothing else after that. You don't need any more moves than that to win my heart. Okay, this I'm is good. I'm just telling you. Okay. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah, it is. So this is the almost famous edition okay. of The Daily Nash. Okay. Everybody that's in the show business... <laughs> At some level, if they've done anything, if they've had an audition, I consider them almost famous. Okay. Let's start there. Start. Singer, songwriter, screenwriter, actor, dog mom, ice skater. Author. What, what, what is famous? How does that compute for you? What is famous for you? Well, yeah, that's a tough one because mm -hmm. my goal wasn't ever to be famous. My goal is to work. And so it's kind of a double-edged sword because you start working and you're going to become famous, right? So even if that's not your goal, but you want to work a lot, I think uh, I would say probably 60 to 80, maybe even more percentage of the people that start off in the entertainment industry see some celebutard on Instagram. Let's just say it what it is. Hello. I'm going to have to look that word up. I don't know. I just made it up. I'm coining it. Celebutard. <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and then <laughs> their like entire it. purpose is to become famous so they mm -hmm. can basically, you know, hot beauty products on Instagram and that's what their life worth is gonna be. I just wanna work. Um, you know, whether it's as an actress, as a writer, or writer that I'm writing movies or- An Olympic skater. <clears throat> it, well, yeah, I've kinda had to put that on the back because <laughs> <laughs> of the fact that I have one key move and that's it, but I love it. You know, there's that. It's a good move, I could but look it's only at that for three and a half minutes. I could look at I that. Know. I'm serious. I know. That's True. amazing. <laughs> but, My God. Until you compare me to somebody else who's actually really good. True enough. But yeah, <laughs> thanks. Wait, what? So yeah, so I think being famous is, you know, there's there's like being famous in a small town. Like I'm from a small town. Do you consider yourself famous? No. Okay. Yeah. Are you famous in your small town? Maybe. Okay. Which if my bring... mother is talking to people, like in her store where she goes shopping for clothes, like... You know, I was famous yesterday for like seven seconds in Hallmark because I write Hallmark movies. Mm. And so my mom went in there and like told everybody, my daughter writes for Hallmark and they've seen some of the movies and that was gotcha. like very exciting. Right. For everybody. And all of a sudden yeah. your oh, TVQ went yeah. up like that. Yeah. But if they could, they could not remember my name, I'm sure the next day. Do you know what I mean? So it's <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. So where is this small town? Where'd you grow up? Pleasant Valley. Pleasant Valley? It's a real thing. There's an actual Pleasant there, Valley? Here's what's funny. Side <laughs> note, <clears throat> when I lived in Los Angeles, I met a girl, and um, she was one of my good friends. We were talking about, you know, different hometowns, and she said, I'm from, I said, where are you from? She's like, Connecticut. I'm like, oh, the East Coast, me too. And she said, where are you from? I said, Pleasant Valley. She goes, that's where I'm from. I said, Pleasant Valley? Like, two words, Pleasant Valley. Small town. She goes, yeah. I said, 
what? Like, and I'm thinking in my head, there's no, I would have remembered you, right? In Connecticut. And I'm in New York. I know. There's, I'm sure, a couple Pleasant Valleys. What is your first recollection of this? When I grow up, I'm going to be a... Actress. Yeah? Yeah. And singer. Both Mm -hmm. of them. And, excuse me, and from my small town, you just didn't do that. That wasn't logical. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a smaller town, farming, you know, it's a lot of farms and apple orchards and... No, you just didn't do that. That was not logical. No dramaturgical industry there for (laughs) Pleasant Valley. No. And so, um, (laughs) but you know, I'm a big, I didn't know then that that was like a weird faith thing, but Mm -hmm. I just knew that I was going to without knowing how to get there. I just knew I would. Mm. So I experienced the exact same thing. Exact same thing. Really? Yeah. You just knew. Yeah. You just know. Yeah. Yeah. So in high school, which describes you best, cheerleader, Mm -hmm. science club, (laughs) or ditching school for an illegal activity? (laughs) Um, Let's see who's listening. No, Um, it's uh, it's a uh, it's very strange. So the beginning, I'm going to say cheerleader. Absolutely, Mm, really. Yes, I wasn't expecting that. I know you weren't. I did. But then because it was a lot on the vocal cords Mm. and again, that little thing inside me was like, you need to make a decision about the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. Like if you really do want to be who you say you want to be and you want to sing music, this is not logical. And you want to be an actress. That's not logical. So I quit. Cheerleading. Yeah. Wow. It was not popular. And then when you became a delinquent? Yes. (laughs) Um, Were you a part of the Mean Girls group or were you a part of the victims of the Mean Girls group? You know, it was a small town and I I don't, it was never Mean Girls. I think it was weird when I quit cheerleading. That was not something that people were like, yay, good for you. We got what you want to do and you're Mm -hmm. following your goals. Mm -hmm. It was like, what? Like, you know, it was a little bit, you know. But it was never mean girls. It was just things that people didn't understand. Right. You know, and nor did I, honestly, at that point. So Mm -hmm. it was kind of all that stuff you kind of have to figure out as you, you know, become a young person and young adult that you have to think of choices that you make. Who did you go to prom with and what time did you get home that night? I have no idea. Which question? Both. <laughs> I probably did make a curfew because I was really, that was not something I normally would miss. And I didn't have a lot of curfews because honestly, I didn't do a lot. Right. You know, I, and we were just having this discussion off camera beforehand, which is I still have that same kind of lifestyle. Well, I have to make myself go out. Right. Because I really love what I do mm-hmm. every day. Right. And there's a lot of hyphens that go along with what I do. And that mm-hmm. means, you know, trying to sleep six hours a night and Mm. trying to make sure everything gets fit into one day. And it's very carefully orchestrated. You, I, I've noticed that about you since I've known you. Yes. Yeah. You are very regimented with your time. I am. And it's, and it's to a fault sometimes because I I mean, we've tried to do this 37 times already. He's not lying. And that's not not. an exaggeration. No, maybe more. (laughs) No, but I've I've always admired that about you. It's because you you have it segmented, you have yeah. it regimented, where you get a lot of stuff done. Yeah, yeah. Usually, mm-hmm. and then sometimes I play with my dog. No, um, but that's true, and especially if it's you know, uh, I have a show coming up in a few days, which means like okay, vocalizing every single day, practice guitar, which I'm not necessarily great at yet, um, you know, and doing all those things that kind of prep you for that. Uh, whether it's a songwriting appointment, it's prepping you for, you know, ideas to who I'm writing with and what's their kind of vibe and 80 ideas to go in with that I can just shoot off the top of my head. So, it, and you know, and then that's without coming in and pitches to the TV people. And that's without an audition, which you've helped me, you know, do a few different times where it's like, okay, we have to have this on tape by tomorrow. So that takes some, um, not just dedication. That's one thing, but you kind of want it every single day. There's not a break that says, I don't feel like doing this today because there's not, there's not one of my hyphens that doesn't need me to be at my best. It doesn't need attention. Yeah. Every single day, including dog mom, <laughs> sometimes winning that. Now I will just yeah. say this. You can find Riley Joe, not yes. at Riley Joe, but at Riley Weston. And she's worth finding 
if for no other reason, to watch her dog. Take <laughs> Joe Bob. Joe Bob. Joe Bob Bubba. <laughs> take a flying leap into yeah. the swimming pool. Yeah, he does. That's the funniest thing I've ever he seen. He belly flops. He does. He's a, and, and that to me, what, what no one sees off camera, and I have to have someone come over and get this because this is a dog that will literally belly flop into a pool, submerge his entire fat body underwater. Mm. I mean, clocking 80, 80 pounds probably now. But yet, <laughs> in between every jump, which is constant for like 20 minutes straight, he has to find some place to go dry off. Even though I don't dry him off until the end, he mm. will rub his back and try to get all the water off of him to go jump in again. And if it's raining out, I'm like, I'm his puh, his personal umbrella holder, <laughs> right? And this huge golf umbrella, because God forbid he gets drops of rain on his back right. while he's trying to go pee. Oh, well, that's just unreasonable. Not okay, right? Mm. So, and then the minute we come in, he throws himself down on the, on the, on the rug that I have and he'll just lay there, like letting it all hang out until everything has been dried from top to bottom. Actress, you talked about being an actress. Tell me about yeah. how that started and how you ended up in Hollywood. So I can't, I, how it started was I didn't know enough then that I shouldn't just walk onto a lot and say, hi, I can, I can audition, I'm really good. Mm -hmm. Because no one, I mean, I didn't go to classes at that point. I had no idea what how Hollywood worked. I basically, um, <laughs> I found a way into Northern California with some friends that were going to go shoot a low budget movie. Mm -hmm. And when I got there, thought, well, I'm already here. How hard can it be to get directions, uh, buy a car with the money I just made and just drive to California down to Los Angeles. It can't be that bad. Mm -hmm. So I did, um, without my parents knowing, um, <laughs> did not go over well. Don't try that at home. Mm -hmm. Um, but I stayed. And it was probably the scariest but best move I could have ever done because coming from something that was so, you know, small town to something so crazy, mm -hmm. I, if I had thought about it and known what it meant when I did it, I probably would not have done it. Mm -hmm. um, but it just kind of started where I think when I walked it, I, I just walked onto the lot like it was okay and no one questioned me. And I had an address for a, a, an agent that was basically in one of the buildings on the lot. And I walked up to her in, in the office and they said, you know, what are you doing here, basically? And I said, hi, I'd like to audition to be a part of your team. Like, I'm a really great actress. Mm -hmm. Thinking that everybody else got their agent that way. Like, well, right. how else would you do it? Right. Like, I didn't have a picture and resume. <laughs> had no idea that. And they were like, and they said that, well, do you have a picture and resume? And I went, mm -hmm. I mean, I could go take a picture mm -hmm. and... I don't have a resume because I don't, I didn't, I haven't worked yet. And they're like, oh God, like you could see their faces like, right. you've got to be kidding me. Mm -hmm. And I think they were so um, like intrigued that somebody just didn't know anything like that in Hollywood. So they let me audition and they said, well, we're not going to sign you theatrically, which again, I didn't even had no, I had no idea what that even meant. Right. And, but we will sign, let, let's have you do like a commercial. So I did some little commercial reading for them and they said, well, we'll submit you on that. And I booked a commercial like that literally a week later. And so my start in Hollywood was very easy. I will not lie. Like it was like, oh, I got a job here. I got a job there. That was fun. Now I'm, now I'm repped theatrically. That's cool. Got pictures, got resumes. How hard can this be? And you have a commercial. And, and I had a commercial. Mm -hmm. And then I, then I got some jobs and, um, and then it got to the point a few years later where it wasn't as easy. You know, there are times when I always say to somebody, they're like, it's so great you're in the entertainment industry. And I said, it's great when it works. Mm -hmm. And you know, as well as I do, from someone who's been in the entertainment industry a long time, it's like, well, there's a lot of times it doesn't work. And there's a lot of times when it's not fun. And a lot of times when you don't make money. So you have to be smart about those times that you're already prepared for that. It, there got For me, it got to the point for, as an actress that I would go in for the same part over and over and I'd hit my mark. I'd roll my eyes. I'd say whatever. I'd be angsty. But, and, you know, and at one point, you know, everybody always says at the end of an audition, do you have any questions or before, you know, and I, I finally started saying, yeah, hey, why am I angsty? You know, because like an 80 year old man who just lost his wife of 63 years could be angsty. Right? He's been with her his whole life. He grew up with her. <laughs> he's angsty. He's mad as hell. He's probably really freaking sad. Is that why he's angsty? Because 
that's not why I'm angsty in my character. So I'm just curious. And then that was like, I'm difficult, you know, mm. which makes sense. Even though I was not doing it in a bitchy way, I was just saying like, I want to understand because this is boring. And if it's boring for me as the person that's supposed to be communicating with somebody who's watching me in Idaho or somebody who's watching me somewhere else on a bigger screen or a smaller screen, then how is it not boring for them mm. that I'm phoning it in? Mm. And it got to the point where finally somebody said, well, you think you can do so much better. You should go write yourself. I was like, you know what? I can suck that much or maybe a little less than <laughs> what that person is doing. So that's really what got me started kind of the segue into just writing for me as an actress. Like, you know, and there's still some scripts I'm holding on to as an actress that I'm like, you know, it's okay that they never get made unless they're made right with me in them. Mm -hmm. And there's some I wanted to be in. I'm like, hey, no, I'd rather just see them made. And I always feel like, again, when you're in that place, you kind of just know when that time comes. Well, let's pivot to that because yeah. <clears throat> uh, you have you have a bunch of uh, you have a bunch of movies that are running on television. Yes, that's awesome. It's pretty cool. If people want to see your yeah. movies, let's talk about your movies. Talk. So actually, one's coming up. Um, there's one on Hallmark that's mm -hmm. coming up. If you have the Hallmark station, look for Always and Forever. Going to be airing. Shameless plug. Um, I believe it's October 21st, but uh, if they find me on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter or uh, hopefully my new website will be up and rolling by then and you could see them. But that's coming up always and forever. Um. Your high school reunion is something you cannot miss. They say young love never lasts. What a great couple you guys were. But sometimes... Are you nervous? No. Comes back around. I don't think I ever stop loving her. I thought you weren't leaving for a few days. Smart men don't let the loves of their lives walk away. Rena Sofer, Dean McDermott, Always and Forever, on Hallmark Movies and Mysteries. And then uh, I think Nanny Express, which is also a Hallmark movie, um, it might be on Netflix by now, um, but you can also see it probably on demand on Hallmark too. And then there's two on Lifetime. Awesome. That's so it's cool. Like the good part of me and then the evil girl part of me. <laughs> you know, I killed the boys. It's as simple as that. Oh, okay. On Lifetime, not mm -hmm. Hallmark. That'd be weird. But, um, <laughs> uh, you know, uh, I've been very lucky. I have. I've, uh, through my acting and being in a um, TV movie, just as an actress, somebody remembered that I said I was writing now and, and they uh, had me rewrite a, a script, which became like a complete and total page one rewrite. And I ended up writing myself a part and auditioning and getting it. And so, which is the new goal, you know, is to kind of say, I want to write these movies that I love and I want to be in. And then hopefully at some point start segueing into being in them with the writing and then putting some music in there. And, you know. <clears throat> now you have a, um, a project that you've been working on for a long time. Before I go, we're talking about, mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of those. And, and I'm the first one to say too, it's, I don't know how I write what I do. Mm -hmm. I have never taken a writing course. I didn't really even know there were script writing programs when I first started writing. Um, <clears throat> and I'm a big believer that I'm just the conduit in whatever God is. Not that God told me to write the bad girl Lifetime movies, but that mm -hmm. the a lot of mortgage this payments told me to write the bad girl <laughs> <Yeah>. movies. Um, <laughs> that's how I wiggle. And I and I know that God's okay with that because he wants me to not be late to my bills. Right. Um, but I, um, this one idea, it's it came to me in the middle of the night. And it came to me at this time when I should have been sleeping and it was more about the acting than the writing. And I uh, had two big auditions the next day for big parts and big think jobs. And all I could do was think of this movie that kept rolling in my head. And by about 4.35 in the morning, I had seen the whole thing play out. Hmm. Now, that has never happened since then. That's what's cool about that one project. And it was like literally God showed me the movie before I... And, and, and I wasn't... I wrote a couple of movies before that, but I wasn't a great writer by any means. And I knew that was going to be like... <sighs> my Goodwill Hunting, my Big Fat Greek Wedding, my Rocky. Mm -hmm. And uh, I started pitching it before I even wrote it. And I would pitch it and I'd cry and people would cry and and there'd be the next person would say, well, I know who you want to star in that. And I'd go, uh, well, no, me. Like, that's the point. Right. Um, and so I, I've had it in development most recently, about two years ago, um, which was really sad when it fell apart um, in, in the development stages because it was a lot of my own personal money that I mm -hmm. put behind it mm. and me. Um, <clears throat> and we had some great people attached and David, um, 
Um, Mickey Evans was attached to direct. He did the Sandlot movies, and he's amazing. And um, we just had some really good people um, to as the actors and everything that I've still been chatting with, hopefully, and we'll get funding at some point. But that is why I started ice skating. So uh, and in an attempt to keep the rights and kind of build as much as I can as far as a package goes, I uh, I wrote the theme song. I've recorded the theme song. <laughs> I um, wrote the book, uh, my first and only book, and it's won three awards, and it's available on Kindle uh, <laughs> before I go. Uh, and, it's, and it's just, um, you know, I... Uh, I still believe in it. You know, I don't, I keep kind of rearranging it to update it as we go along. Um, you must believe in it if you're still I do. ice skating. I, I do. Well, and I said, <laughs> well, here's the other thing. I love ice skating. Mm. Like, honestly, if I had learned how to ice skate when I was like three or four, mm -hmm. I'm, I've at least told myself and convinced <clears throat> myself that I would have pretty much won the Olympics mm -hmm. like sure. numerous times. Um, <laughs> which is probably all in my head and that's okay, but I'm going to go with it. I, and I just love it. I love the, the people I get to skate with. They're awesome. Um, I just love being there and that, and it's a break for me. You know, I have a sweet niece who just started college and we had this conversation yesterday and she's like, you know, I actually doing a dance club and she was so excited. And I said, this was good for you, not just for the physical, but for the mental. She said, you know what? That's exactly what I, I was so stressed and I was, I was overwhelmed with everything, but then I got to go and dance for like an hour. And I just got to forget about everything. And I thought, that's exactly how I feel about skating. Hmm. It's, you know, I mean, there are times I'm getting up at the crack ass of dawn. And I'm like, how do these kids do it five days a week? Like, right. what the hey? Mm -hmm. It's just, it's a lot. But the minute I get there and I step on the ice, it's like I can, a little bit of me becomes Madison, that character. And, and I'm going to hold on to that. If it doesn't ever get made, which I think probably this is the first year I came to that place thinking, Okay, I have to. I've let it go, you know. And if it if it gets made, I'm excited. And if it doesn't get made, I'm still excited because right. it's still a really great project that I will believe into the day I die. You play around town. Yes, it's what what's called a songwriter rounds. Yes, you're a songwriter. How many songs do you think you've written over the years? You know, I'm gonna guess it's probably maybe 250. Oh wow. Maybe. 230 something like that that's a catalog it's a good catalog wow. you know it's i i just talked to someone about this the other day i don't know how many i'm proud of not all of them for sure <laughs> you know what i mean but i would say probably there's i would i'm gonna guesstimate there's somewhere in the 90s that i'm proud of and somewhere in the 30s that i am i'd like to play out or i want people to hear mm -hmm. which is not bad for only being here you know about five years it's not mm -hmm. a bad thing and there was a lot of times, look, now I haven't written for a year, a song. Um, and it's been more of a movie year, which is a good thing, too. Um, and, you know, it's Nashville. Unless you're having a pub deal, you're not getting necessarily paid great to play out a lot. Right. So, but that's something I'm looking at. And I'm meeting with publishers now, which is very exciting. And it's kind of interesting to see, like, which publishers gravitate towards which songs. Right. You know? Mm. And they're never the same, which is awesome. Yep. But uh, it's a matter of finding that good fit. What's the most unusual thing that's happened when you were out singing? Oh, my Jesus. All right. So <laughs> not a church story, but <laughs> Floribama, great bar. Yeah. Florida, Alabama. Mm -hmm. um, it is rowdy as heck. There's a lot of different songwriter festivals that we always play out there. And there was one show and it was probably, I mean, it was probably like midnight or 11 that we were playing. It was probably pretty late. But there they literally have. No lie. There's this huge like string all across the top. And there's like two levels there. And there's a lot of smoke going around. And there's bras and underwear that people have taken off and put up there, thrown up there. I swear. I kept my underpants and my bra on, Mom. Nice. However, while we were there, and there was, uh, I want to say five of us in that round, great, really well-known songwriters, right? And this lady is, and she's had a lot of drink. I mean, a lot to drink. And she's <laughs> yelling and screaming and her boyfriend slash husband kept trying to hone her in and bring her back down mm. to sit down. And this lady would not have it. And mm. at one point, and I don't even know what song was happening, <clears throat> but I was with, I was with two of my good guy friends on either side of me. And one of whom was, <laughs> his facial expression was, this lady was doing this and all of a sudden her shirt just went. Oops. Defied gravity. It did something. Mm. 
I mean, it was like clear and present danger in front of us. Like, <laughs> and I remember, you know, and the guy that was singing kind of just, boom, kept on going and we were like, and so no one, no, everyone kind of like just stopped and he slowly stopped and all of a sudden we were like, and I said, well done, ma'am. Well done. And that's all I said, because I had to break the ice somehow. And that was it. And then he got her to go back. But we we're just like, none of us, we, I mean, I couldn't even forget about concentrating after that because you don't, that was like the craziest mm. thing. I mean, and she didn't, she was oblivious. Now, did she get rid of her bra at that point? Or she never had she one She never on. had that's one That's the on. awkward phase. I gotcha. I was trying to keep it PG-13. <laughs> okay. No, no bra. She had already like, I don't even know if it there was no bra that old night or whether it was up there. Mm. Young yeah. talent comes here every day. Yes. Right? Yes. You were one of those people. Yes. Uh, what do you know now that you wish you knew when you got to Nashville? Hmm. Um, don't write a song unless you love the song. Hmm. And even if it's a stupid song, hmm. which there are many that are getting a lot of airplay still. Mm -hmm. What I started doing was kind of reevaluating after I spent the first few years writing two, three times a day sometimes. Um, and then I'd go to some writes with, with people and I thought, this is the dumbest song I've ever written. Mm -hmm. And maybe the dumbest song ever written in the history of music. And, and I'd find myself four hours later still struggling to finish the song and wasting time, which I don't, I do not like wasting time, mm. you know? And so I stopped doing that. And so it sounds picky for somebody who doesn't have a number one in a big cut. But on the other hand, I'm writing things I'm proud of so that when I do sign with a publisher or I sign a deal somewhere, I'm not coming in with junk. Mm -hmm. That's just stupid. Mm. And, and it just serves no purpose. When somebody has another appointment they're trying to run to and they have to be done by a certain time, well, then why are we writing today? Like... So I'm hearing you say, uh, be patient. Be patient. With your development yeah. of your yeah. craft. Write what you want to write and not what someone's telling you to write. Or do not write what the radio's playing because mm -hmm. tomorrow they're playing something else. Right. They don't care what you wrote yesterday. How do you find partners to partner with when you're writing songs in Nashville? So um, I've been, I was lucky again when I moved here. I met some good people that were so helpful in trying to like set you up with different people that they thought you'd may be good with. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a blind date. It's kind of mm -hmm. how I can explain it. Because sometimes like publishers would set me up and you'd show up in a room and some random person would walk in. You're like, okay, hi, hey. You know, but it's it's been- um, A minor FG. <laughs> it's kind of, it's weird, right? Like it's yeah. a kind of, you know, and sometimes you don't even write a song the first time. You just kind of mm -hmm. get to know each other. Yeah. Um, and when you play out a lot, which I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do, it's, you know, if I'm working, if like I'm at a show on Wednesday and um, I'm playing with two other people and, and uh, you know, one of the guys I'm playing with is with Toby Key's company and the other girl I'm friends with. And it's like, okay, well, if I like a lot of his songs, I could say, hey, man, we should, and he likes my songs, we should say, let's get together and write something. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of how it's, it is too, where you do a lot of shows with some people and you get to hear what each other has done before and that you think, well, we might be a good match, you know. All right, lightning round. Lightning round. Favorite word? You're going to still get me in trouble. It starts with F. Sorry. I'm sorry. Freedom? Freedom is a good word. Fruit? Let's go with it. Both. You are, are you getting ready to drop the F-bomb? I can't. Not on, not on national television. Horrible. Famous. Least favorite word? I can't say that one for sure. <laughs> There's no why you, way. Why are you even here? <laughs> you know. Come on, you got to have one at least favorite word. What's it start with? Cat. The one thing you wish you would have done. Like in my whole life? Mm -hmm. Sweet Jesus. I don't know, learn to ice skate when I was three. Thanks, Mom and Dad. No. Um, you know? <laughs> Thanks, Peggy. Th you know, I really, I pretty much do everything I want to do. Mm -hmm. I just try it. 
like ice skating. Okay, let's go ice skate. Like I, so I want to move to Nashville. I moved to Nashville. So have you ever hurt yourself ice skating? Yes, I have actually. Um, to the point where my wrist, I had a brace on. Oh, I remember, remember that. that. Yep, and that was by the way, I wasn't trying anything. <laughs> Standing still. <laughs> Woo! Right over backwards. <clears throat> I had first started skating, then I hurt my um, tailbone pretty mm, bad. Yeah. Doing a jump. I remember um, that. Yep. I do. Yeah. What is the one thing you regret? Not moving to Nashville sooner. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You get to the pearly gates. Yes. What's the first thing God says to you? You have a potty mouth, young lady. <laughs> <laughs> um, probably. But, and hopefully, I have this one shirt. I have this great, I go to this great connect group at my church, and I love these ladies and this gentleman that are in this group, and we're reading a great book, and... And the other day I wore a shirt, a baseball shirt, and it says, I love Jesus, but I cuss a little. That's the understatement of the century. Yeah, but it is. I, it is. But you've I done know. really well today. But I really did curb my enthusiasm for that. I know. But Impressive. I feel like God would say, you done good. you done good. And I want, I want to, at the end of my life, to say I made a difference. Not in the world at large, but like with people. That's my... That's my thing. I, I want to touch people in a way where they feel seen and heard and loved. Does that make sense? Of course it does. People kind always serious, talk about, uh, I want to change the world. No, no wanna... don't change the world. Just make your bed. Yeah. Clean the kitchen. Yeah. And do what's right. And help somebody that's within help somebody. reach. That's the thing. And right? I think we all could do a whole lot better on mm. that. It takes five seconds to smile at somebody, not even a split second to say, have a good day. And I'm a big believer that you don't know what other people are going through on a daily basis. And especially right now in the world as we know it and what is going on, you know, outside our own little doors. Um, I just want to make a difference in those people's lives. Like, Here's what I believe. I believe, regardless of what's going on, yeah. we are so lucky. So Everybody is so lucky I to agree. be alive yeah. Yeah. at this time in history. I agree. Are you kidding are me? Are you kidding me? I know. One word, Netflix. No, sorry, <laughs> no. I mean, it's, yeah, <laughs> but really Netflix. Yeah. Um, but, and but, Prime. Yes, and Prime and Hulu and, and Hallmark. <laughs> no, but I love my Hallmark. But it's true. We are so flipping blessed. Yeah. I mean, you look at other countries. I'm mm. sorry. Like, it, it is, I, I mean, I start my day off by, before I get out of bed, saying, okay, I woke up and I'm breathing. Mm -hmm. Life is freaking good. Right. Like, it's a good day. And that's, and I get to do what I love, like, every day. Like, come on. I get paid to write movies and sing and write mo and songs and mm. and meet people. Like, there is nothing wrong there so the days that stuff goes wrong and the air conditioning freezes and the pool's gonna leak and there's and the and the and the that's just stuff like that stuff the p word the, perspective perspective yes uh riley weston thank you yes. you're a dear friend and you're so mega talented thank you Rocket. i'm glad to know you glad to know you sir this has been awesome say your prayers share your toys don't hurt anybody if you make a mess clean it up Skate fast, take a lot of chances, but wear your knee pads and elbow pads because it hurts when you go down, and she can attest to that. Most importantly, remember, it ain't enough to be good when you dream of being great. Thank you for watching the Daily Night.